As of Generate Blocks Pro version 1.9, we have a fully featured global style system, which is essentially just classes under the hood. With this system, we can now apply as many global styles to an individual element as we want, which is great, it behaves just as though you were writing the HTML and CSS by hand, but you're faced with the challenge of how to manage the various classes, and especially in this case, utility classes. So for consistent things like spacing, grid, gaps, alignment, all those kinds of things that you're gonna to want to reuse across all of your various websites, I am simply going to show you how I'm managing that now in my starter template. And hopefully this allows you to maybe glean a little bit of my workflow into yours. Now here on my screen, if we take a look at the legacy global style system, we can see that how you did it in Generate Blocks in the past was you created kind of a post and inside of that you managed your global styles. And now if you were to go to that same screen with the latest version of Generate Blocks Pro, you're essentially presented with this global style screen. Now we have none on this site at the moment because I'm gonna walk through you know, kind of my strategy. And as we add those, they'll appear here in this section on the page. Now I wanna mention that when it comes to class naming and conventions, frameworks, all that kind of stuff, it's a hotly debated topic in every aspect of web development, not just in WordPress, but across really any framework, whether you're using JavaScript or pure HTML or whatever you're doing, the way that you do this is going to vary wildly. There are people who feel very strongly about their way being best, but in reality, you need to just decide what works best for you and amalgamate kind of everybody's thoughts and workflows into your own. So what I've done here is distilled it down into the most simple set of utility classes that I can possibly muster. And that's exactly what I use on basically every site. I'm not building revolutionary things, so I don't need to over-engineer my stuff. And so with that, one thing that we can do is in Generate Press, we have the feature called Elements. Now, if we go to this, Elements are the place that you would create all of your various templates, and you can do a lot of things like hook in individual sections, like a CTA section, or even things before, after your header, basically anything that you wanna do that manipulates templates or dynamic blocks is going to exist inside of Generate Press Elements. If you're interested in learning more about specifically what elements can do, I do have a Generate Made Easy course that you can take a look at and learn a whole lot more about elements, which are incredibly powerful and amazing. What I'm doing in this case, in my starter site here, is I created an element that is basically just going to hold all of my global styles. So this is going to be for my utility classes and just kind of the general site styles. And what I've done is just set it to a type of block, which is just when I add this element. I chose it to be the type of block here. And then the location, I just didn't set it to appear anywhere because this specific thing doesn't need to necessarily appear somewhere on our site, as opposed to you know other ways you might do it where if you create a page and you call it you know something like style book or whatever, it, you could you know hold everything in here, but then you run the risk of there being a page on the site that could be indexed or maybe somebody accidentally deletes it. So for me, managing it inside of the elements area just makes a whole lot more sense. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and just close this page. And then here is that element that I created. So inside of that, I just set up a bunch of kind of default sort of sections and elements that I would use on a standard site. I'll open my sidebar here so you can see them. And what we're gonna do is walk through a few of these and I'm gonna create a, a couple of the global styles and just kind of show you my convention for this. So the first thing that I would do is on my main container, this is going to be kind of every section's container. So if I want it to be within the page width, and then I still have the ability to apply like a background color, I'm gonna use a setup like this. Now, when you add a inner container in Generate Blocks, it does automatically prompt you to add margin left and right, and then it also will set the max width of that container. But I personally like to do it with a little bit more control just through a global style. So what I would do here is just create one, and I typically call this one inner container. So I'll create this blank style. So then inside of this section, we're gonna to go to sizing and then our max width in this case is 1200 pixels. At the time of recording, there's not a global variable we can tap into for this because you do have a width setting depending on whether you're using generate press or generate blocks or both. And in the future, there will be a global variable. But even in this case, we're gonna use this all over our site. And if we needed to change the max width, we could do it in one place since it's a global style and it will apply everywhere across the site. So 1200 pixels is gonna be perfect here. Then what I would do is on my tablet size, I'm going to go ahead and set some spacing on the left and right edges of something like maybe 1.5 rim. And rim is a relative unit where one rim is just equal to 16 pixels. It's really great to get in the habit of using rim, really good for accessibility. And for instance, if somebody changes their default browser text size, your website will adapt accordingly based on what they've set. Whereas if you use pixels as opposed to rim, it's not going to adapt. It's gonna be static and locked. So then on our tablet screen size here, we do have 1.5 rem, like I just said. And if we wanted to drop this down on mobile to like one rem, we could just do that like that. 
Now, of course, with generate blocks, you do have the ability to set custom breakpoints and custom at rules. So we could do container queries. You could set up very specific breakpoints if you want to. And maybe that's a topic for another video. So drop that down below if you're interested. Then the only other thing we need to do is back on our full desktop size, we wanna go down to the spacing section and we wanna set margin left and right of auto here so that that container is centered on the page regardless of how wide the user's browser is. So we can go ahead and just save this and what this is going to do is now go ahead and create our first global style. And I wanna come back over to my global styles area. And what we can see is there is that inner container. And what's so cool about this to me is if we weren't sure all of the various things that a particular global style, AKA class does, we can simply just click on view CSS and there's everything we just did. Margin left and right auto, max width of 1200 pixels. Then at our breakpoints, we can see there's the padding left and right that we set, which is perfect. So cool to be able to see all that. So moving back to my element here that holds all of my site styles, Modifying the heading elements is going to vary depending on whether you're using generate press as your theme, or if you're just using generate blocks on top of some other custom theme, depending on what you're doing, you would typically come into the generate press customizer. I've got a couple of colors here set up for my global colors. And then your typography, you'd come in and you would add a font from Google fonts or in an upcoming version of generate press, they'll be downloaded locally in a feature called the font manager. So what you would then do is come in and say for, you know, every H1 on my site, I want the font family to be, you know, whatever you have uh, kind of installed already. And then you would say, we want them all to be 700. And then you can also go ahead and set a font size of, let's say something like five rem. But we also have the ability to set up clamp values, which basically means that your font will never be bigger than and will never be smaller than a specified value. But between those two, it will adapt fluidly to whatever that font size is that you've set. So there's a ton of great font size clamp generators out there. So what you would do is just say like, it can go down to a minimum of 468 pixels, like maybe somebody's iPhone, for instance, all the way up to our value of 1200 pixels, which we already set as our container max width. Then between those values for our H1, maybe we want the minimum font size to be two and our maximum to be something like five rem. So all we would need to do is just simply copy this. In this case, we really only need this portion, this particular website, highlights everything whenever you click it. So we just need to copy this. Then what we could do is drop this into our font size. And what we'd need to do, just simply remove the font size colon. And then at the very end, just to make it clean, just remove that semicolon. So now what we can do is publish this. And let's go ahead and just take a look at our page here on the front end. And we can see that when we start to minimize our browser, you can see that that headline is shrinking and adapting down to a minimum of two rem. So it's really, really nice. And this is gonna prevent weird breakage and depending on people's devices, you're not gonna have weird breaking issues that sometimes your clients see something and you don't see it on your end just because your screen sizes are different. So this is really, really great. Now, the reason why I mentioned it here in the Generate Press Customizer is because you can also do it if you prefer directly in Generate Blocks, you could drop it into the typography area on your headline. Now, of course, I don't have a global style set up for this, so it'd be this one specific element in this case, but you could conceivably create a global style, you know, for something like a looks alike headline. So, you know, if you need an H1 semantically, but it needs to look like an H2 for whatever reason, you can do that directly inside of Generate Blocks. And that's what I would do here in the site styles is create headings that look like something else, and then just leave my standard defaults alone here in the Generate Press Customizer. That's a ton of information packed in there. So if you have any questions, do please, of course, drop that down in the comments. Moving along here, because we're already taking up a ton of time in this video, I wanted to go ahead and take a look at buttons. So I have two buttons here, and what I like to do is go ahead and set up a baseline button class that's gonna handle everything like our padding, alignments, you know, border radius, things like that. So we can reuse them in multiple places. And then we just have an alt class for like our colors and our backgrounds. So one thing you can do is just type in BTN. It's generally a good idea to avoid a class like button primary because you're gonna conflict with core styles and lots of other, you know, third party plugins. So we would want to go ahead and either just do BTN or in some cases people like to prefix their global styles with maybe like the letter of their agency, something like in my case, it would be A hyphen BTN, something like that. What I'll do here for the sake of example is just do BTN because that's what I would do on a real site anyway. So we would go ahead and let's just say copy the local block styles into this global style so we can kind of modify them and see our changes in real time. What we'll do is just come to layout and it's set to inline flex, which we definitely want. That's good because if our outer container is not a flex item, then this can end up causing layout issues and your button will be super small and it's sometimes a little bit confusing. 
Then in the spacing section, let's change this to something like two rim left and right, and then maybe something like one rim top and bottom, like that. And it looks like we are not seeing our changes. Let's go clear out these local block styles. There we go. And then now we'll go back to our button and we can already see the changes kind of taking place here. So what I would want to do in this case is let's just stay, say our standard button class is going to use one of our global styles like this deeper purple. And then let's say we want a border radius of something like a hundred pixels to make it kind of that pill rounded shape. Then what we could do is say for all of our buttons, the default is going to be a hover background color of this lighter purple. And then in the main state, we would want to set an effect then a transition of something like 0.2 seconds. So there's a nice little change effect there. Then our secondary button, we probably don't want that same background color. Well, that's no problem. All we need to do is select our secondary button. We're gonna drop in our BTN class, and then we're gonna clear out the local block styles. And then I'll drop in another global style here called BTN hyphen, maybe secondary, like that. Then we would go with a background color on our standard class of maybe this deep green, and then the hover will be the lighter green. And it still inherits the border radius, the padding, and the transition that we applied to that primary class. And of course, if you went and inspected the page on the front end, you could see that represented. So then in the case of our button here, no matter which button we edit, if we wanted to change the padding, we could go to the BTN class spacing, and then let's just say for whatever reason you needed to crank the padding left and right to four rem, it applies to both buttons because they both share that same base BTN class. The next thing I wanna cover that I use all the time is grid classes. So what I've done is set up a couple of containers here just to demonstrate, and the idea is very simple. So what I wanna do in this case is on this container, I would just type in grid hyphen two, and what this is gonna tell me that it's just gonna be two containers 50-50 side by side. So I'm gonna create blank style, Layout will be display of grid. Then we'll come down to the grid template columns. These grid template column functions can get a little bit complex, but if you break them down, they're not really that difficult. You can look for the calculators and generators that will help you understand what they're doing. But in general, most of these are going to be totally fine. And I'll show you, it's gonna be even more simple in just a minute. So now that we have that class of two grids, we can see that we have these inner containers that have inherited that grid child status here, which is great. Now the grid three is exactly the same idea. Just create a global style called grid three. Moving on to like another one down here, grid one, two, one. I would create that class name of exactly that grid one, two, one. And what that tells me is there's going to be two containers of equal width on the outside edges and one that's double their width in the middle. And of course, that's all going to be handled by that grid class directly. So we'll click on create, blank style, layout, display of grid. And what we could do in this case for grid template columns is find one of the ones that looks similar, just like this. But we can also just type in 1FR, 2FR, 1FR. And FR is just a fractional unit. So it's just going to figure out how much space is available and divide it up accordingly. We could change this to three FR and you can see that these columns get a little bit more narrow and that one in the middle grew a bit. So you can play with these and make whatever you want. But in our case, it's going to be one FR, two FR, one FR, which is exactly what I said, grid one to one here. So again, we could just save these. And now that those global styles are created, we can see that they're all starting to populate here in our global styles backend area, which is great. Now let's cover two more things before we wrap up this video. The next one I wanna show you is gap classes. So this is going to be easy to demonstrate now that we have those grids. And what I'm gonna do here is just use gap hyphen one. And for me, this represents gap one rim. That's what these mean. So create blank style. Under layout, we don't have to redeclare our display here anymore. So all we have to do is just say column gap of one rim and a row gap of one rim as well. Then let's come back up to like our grid one-to-one -one and look at how these containers are stuck kind of together. So what we can do is add another style here of just gap hyphen one like that. And you can see now they are spaced out perfectly, which is awesome. In my case here, I'm just gonna create all my various gap classes on this one individual element. There's no reason to apply them to a bunch of different places. We can just add a bunch here and kind of manage them from one place. So that's why I have this section called all spacing and then my container down here called gap. So if I was coming to modify my gap classes, I could just do this. One thing you also should be aware of is that now in the latest version of WordPress, you can right click on these elements and choose rename or you can click on the three dots, get the same context menu and you can rename it. And that's how I've given these blocks a custom name. 
And then the last thing I wanna cover is the padding classes here. So these are fairly simple for me. I'm typically going to use some kind of interval of eight or 16. So I'm gonna go with something like padding hyphen one, and that's gonna tell me that is padding one on the top and bottom. I personally like to add an additional class called padding one hyphen card. And in my head, what that means is that card is on all four sides. So if I need padding on all four sides that's equal, I'm gonna use a class like that. This is where it starts to fall apart for some people because you have to come up with your own convention and your own presets that can be consistent across all of your websites, which of course is sometimes easier said than done. Again, for most standard brochure sites, you're gonna need maybe six, eight, 10 spacing and gap classes. So you don't really have to overthink it. Just come up with something that works and try your best to stick to it. Even if you build a site and you realize there was global styles missing or the naming was poor, just fix it and try it again on the next one. It doesn't matter that much if the old site is like bad or unconventional. You're still taking advantage of the global styles, which is gonna save you time and effort regardless. So in this case, I would just go, you know, padding one card, blank style, spacing, padding, and link all sides will be one rim. And now if I wanted to, I could come back to one of these grid elements and let's say maybe our center one, we want that padding one card. Now we have padding on all four sides of that container. I am spaced out, perfect. Again, I would just continue here with the padding classes and I would just add a bunch of them, padding one, two, three card, padding one, two, three for top and bottom. You could even do half intervals if you want. But this is a great way to keep things really consistent so you could move these classes around to different sites and they kind of pick up their inherited values. Then of course I would do the same thing with my margin. Typically I'm not using very many margin classes except margin bottom, but even then a lot of times you can rely on a gap class instead of margin. So I don't use very many margin utility classes. Most of the time I am using grid and gap. I rely on those super heavily. And then of course our buttons benefit massively from global styles uh, and occasionally the looks like headlines. So this is a pretty typical idea of how I'm managing global styles across my sites. As you can see, this is still a work in progress for me after many, many months, I'm trying to find the best blend of usability and practicality. And I think that I've stumbled upon that here finally. So that's why I wanted to make this video. If you have any specific questions, please do let me know. And of course, check out Generate Made Easy if you wanna learn more about Generate Press and Generate Blocks. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.